Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, welcome to you here and to anybody who may be listening to our wise words uh, from the comfort of their own home or, or indeed later through our uh, YouTube link ups. Um, as usual, I'll go through one or two of the parish notices first and then I'll hand over to Roger, our speaker. Uh, mobile phones off, please, although I doubt whether you'll get a signal down here. Uh, if there is a fire alarm, it will be a genuine one. There is no uh, planned. Uh, tests uh, and we exit either through the doors behind us here or the way we came in uh, and out into the Covent Garden piazza. Uh, in chronological order, those of you who are on our email list um, should have had uh, the email we sent out a few days ago saying that the bookings for the steam trips on the district line in June uh, will open at 10 o'clock on Wednesday. Uh, so if you're interested in that, uh, join the throng who will be on their PCs tapping away at the appointed hour. Um, an email went out this morning to say that the event at Barking this coming Saturday, which marks uh, 40 years since RTs were in regular service in London, um, the museum's RT4712, which is the one in Golden Jubilee livery will be taking part in that event uh, and is expected to work a number of fares free passenger journeys uh, on the 23Cs and the 62s next Saturday. Uh, and we don't meet here again until after the forthcoming depot open weekend, which is on the 27th and 28th of April. Uh, and friends get a concessionary rate of entry uh, to that weekend. Looking ahead to uh, our programme of future meetings, uh, we meet here again on the 29th of April uh, when Mark Allett, uh, who some of you may remember came some years ago now to talk about the Tornado project. Uh, and if you thought that restoring or recreating one steam locomotive was quite enough for anybody to get involved in in a lifetime, uh, Mark has moved on uh, to the Gresley P2 project. Uh, and he'll be talking about that uh, here on Monday, the 29th of April. Uh, that will be followed a couple of weeks later by uh, one of our less formal um, meetings at Acton Depot, uh, when John King, who's the friend's sales manager and is actually here tonight, um, will be taking to the uh, uh, podium again with a second talk, uh, this time on uh, London and South Western Railway rail routes to the city and the West End. Uh, and that's at Acton Depot on Thursday the 16th of May. Uh, it's a little way ahead yet, and we will probably, we've put it on the website, but not yet, but the booking's open. Uh, we'll probably open those bookings uh, on round about the 15th of April, so a month before the meeting starts. That's it, I think, by way of the parish notices. Um, Roger French, who's a regular attender here, as uh, many of you all know, uh, is our speaker tonight. Uh, Many of you will know Roger from his professional career, particularly as the managing director of the award-winning Brighton and Hove Bus Company, although I guess a, a fair bit of clear water has passed under that bridge now. Like six years. <laughs> yes. um, but Roger, in his, if, he, if he regards it as a retirement, um, has managed to do something which many of us who think we're retired uh, thought we were going to do, which is to travel a lot. Um, and speaking personally, few of us seem to manage that, at least to the extent that we would really ideally like to do. Uh, but Roger, uh, in, uh, in retirement, uh, has journeyed widely, particularly by bus, uh, to observe uh, good and bad operating practice uh, so that people can learn from the one uh, and aspire to the other. Um, and during the course of those journeys uh, has also looked at some of the fine scenery that you can see out of the bus window. Uh, and so, the title of his talk is his own selection of, it's not the definitive word, Britain's Best Bus Routes. Thanks, for, thanks, Barry. Well, thank you very much, Barry. And I have to say it's an honour, a privilege and a pleasure to be here this evening indulging my passion 
for bus and train travel as well, but particularly tonight with bus travel, which I've been at actively doing now for, as I just said, six years exactly to tonight when I retired from Brighton and Hove. I soon, in those six years, I soon covered every inch of train track and tram track as track bashers do and I covered the entire London bus network. Uh, it's not hard to identify the hundred best train journeys in, in Britain and indeed just recently on my blog and you're very welcome to log on and have a look I listed my hundred best train journeys but when it comes to Britain's best bus routes a hundred just doesn't do justice to it in fact there are hundreds and hundreds I gave a talk along these lines about a year ago and uh, rather than questions at the end, because it's not the subject that lends itself to questions, people very kindly took up my invitation to let me have their suggestions for more good best bus routes to go on. And I came away with scores of more to add to the to-do list, which I've been doing ever since. And I hope after tonight, uh, I'll have another few score to, to do as well. And also, people regularly tweet me their suggestions. And you're, again, if you tweet, you're very welcome to keep me up to date with your travels, as I try and do with my travels. But what is, what is a best bus route? What do I mean by a best bus route? Is it the busiest, the most frequent, the most reliable, the friendliest drivers, the gorgeous scenery, the most luxurious, comfortable bus? the most splendidly, splendidly designed livery. It's very much a personal choice. And I hope in the next hour and a bit to give you a taste of what I regard as the best, wherever in the country that may be. And after all, trains get so much coverage, and deservedly so too, yet buses carry four and a half times the number of people who travel by train. So I thought it was right that tonight we celebrate what's best bus. As I say, there are so many uh, to share. We've got uh, the guy who sets all this up, made an observation that we've got 666 six, 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 oops, slides to get through tonight. So we're going to have to get our foot down. And I for forgive me if there's a bit of a pace that I go through. But I have got a few exit routes if we don't quite manage to get right to the end. Now. This is very much a personal selection, and you may not agree. And uh, you may wonder why there's a reference to the 29 there in the, in the route number box. Uh, it probably means nothing as a bus route to you, but for me, from my North London home, where I grew up in the late 1950s and early 1960s, it was my long trunk route into central London, starting back down at Victoria, now it's Trafalgar Square, going to Wood Green, where it now terminates, and on then to the wonderfully Holden-designed bus station at Southgate and Cock Fosters, before continuing to Potter's Bar and South Mims. What a wonderfully long journey, especially the through journeys on a Sunday from Victoria all the way to South Mims. OK, I've cheated here as the northern section was renumbered 298 51 years ago now, and I captured it on a recent Potter's Bar bus garage open day at Clare Hall. But you can imagine my delight when I did two spells of bus conducting in the early 1970s at Palmer's Green Garage, and we did that route on a Sunday, and I was absolutely thrilled to do it. So that's why it always has a special uh, bus route memory for me. Now, the thing, though, about bus routes and aficionados of the renown and the best, which you clearly are here tonight, you only have to mention a number and people immediately visualize what route you're talking about. So it won't take long. I mean, for example, the most wonderfully tour any tourist getting a round London sightseeing tour, why don't they just spend 150 on a ride from Liverpool Street and oh, were the days to go right through to Hammersmith. Uh, soon it will just be a little stub of a route to Victoria, regretfully. But of course, if you live north of Watford Gap, the 11 means something completely different. It's the two hour and a bit circular all the way round anti-clockwise and clockwise, the middle of Birmingham. And a lovely route it is too if you want to see Birmingham in all its glory. 
Um, this isn't anything to do with Dulwich. This is, of course, the wonderful Bright uh, Brighton along the South Downs to Eastbourne route. Um, that isn't anything to do with Archway either. This is the most wonderfully designed livery for a cross reading. And I'm delighted my friend Ray from Best Impressions. And you'll notice so much of his work tonight. Because I think livery is important to show a good best bus route. Uh, the 17 has run from Wokingham Road three tons to Tilehurst. And the great thing about that route is it's got two turning circles at either end. And I've got a special penchant for turning circles. Perhaps the uh, longest running London bus route without change, it was extended to Pimlico in 1912, I understand, and, two, and 107 years later is still going to Pimlico and Hampstead Heath, save for one-way schemes, it's still doing that. Then, of course, no, not New Cross, but of course the wonderful Harrog Harrog uh, Leeds Harrogate Ripon luxury service that is the Transdev Blazefield Harrogate Bus Company Route 36. That number, I'm sure, means a lot to anyone who's been up in the Lake District because it's the north-south spine route that goes from Keswick right down to, in fact, Lancaster, but more infamously through Kendall, a beautiful route to travel on. And finally, in my number selection to test you on your numbers is the cross-Pennine route from Carlisle across to Newcastle. So numbers mean a lot, but let's give a few sort of awards for, to begin with. And, and my... My take on, and you may be able to give me more information later, and please do, you may know more than me, but what is Britain's most frequent bus route? Well, I thought for a while it was the 36, because it leaves Clapton, a pond, or just around the Hackney area, every two minutes. But actually, by the time you get to Victoria, it's four minutes um, four minutes apart so that doesn't count so we have to i think go to the 521 a very frequent route you can actually get four buses in one photograph uh, it's so frequent it runs every two minutes except when it's every three minutes right through the morning peak that is an impressive frequency and i suggest has the award for the most frequent bus except I was in Birmingham not so long ago and noticed this outside New Street Station promoting the fact that these buses run every one to seven minutes, every one minute. So I did a bit of research online and I think they're cheating because all three routes run every 12 minutes, the 16, the 16A and the 16 whatever. So it's certainly not every minute. So I think the 521 does get it, unless you know better. What's Britain's least frequent route? Now here's a little story to tell you. This, I believe, is the least frequent route. It runs from Tavistock across to Dawlish, the 112. And you have to be uh, a little bit smart if you want to catch this route. It's one journey from Tavistock to Dawlish and one journey back. So it's two journeys. But it isn't two journeys a day. It isn't two journeys a week. It isn't two journeys a month. It's two journeys a year, because it runs on the fifth Saturday of the month in the summer, which means this year, if you want to catch the 112, put it in your diary for the 29th of June or the 28th of September. Now, as I say, I gave this talk a year ago, and I said the same thing, and I said, but please don't go on the June date, because I'm going to go on that date, and I'm worried if it overloads, because there's quite a long time to wait. In the audience was a lovely guy called John Crowhurst. He's not here tonight, I understand. I didn't realise that you have to book if you really want to guarantee a seat. There's 16 seats on the minibus, and you can book eight, and then eight are first come, first served. And John emailed me just a couple of weeks before it was due to go on the 28th of June and said he'd, he'd rung them to book his place on it, and he'd asked if Roger French was booked. And the lady said, no, because I didn't know you had to book. And so he very kindly said he was Roger French and booked me on. And he wasn't allowed to book two, I think. So because, oh, that's right, it was the eighth seat. So that was it. So I said, oh, John, you shouldn't have done that. You should be on it. And I'll take my chance and get there early. So I thought, what shall I do? I'll get there early and get John's 
seat on ch off the chance of getting there, you see. So I noticed in the timetable that it starts not in Tavistock itself, but at Park Road Lawson. So there I was at half past eight, ready for the five, five past nine departure for this bus that if I missed, we'd have to wait till September <laughs> to have another ride on. And by 20 to 9, a little queue had formed on the other side of the road. So I immediately knew I wasn't going to be first because these ladies knew what they were doing. They were regulars. They were already forming a queue. Then good old John did turn up. There he is towards the back end there. I got them all to wave. But I was, this is about 10 to 9. And I'm thinking, blimey, by about 5 past 9. And then we've got to get to Tavistock bus station. This is just the first sort of out of Tavistock town pickup. About uh, just before five past nine, the bus turned up and with its 16 seats, and I think, I think it was about 13 of us got on here. They obviously all know you have to get on at the very first stop. Don't leave it to the bus station, so I'm giving you this hint here. And we get to the bus station, and there were two people waiting. So we had pretty much a full bus because you can see that the other seat was taken by uh, the, the, the wheelies as well. But it was a lovely ride and uh, it's well worth doing it. Get down to Tavistock, <laughs> five past nine on the fifth Saturday of a summer month. And that is Britain's least frequent bus route. What about Britain's longest bus route? Well, I reckon, again, I stand to be corrected. It goes from Glasgow to Uig on... Um, the Isle of Skye, run by Scottish, uh, run by CityLink. It's 230 miles. It leaves Glasgow at uh, around about nine, or leave Uig at uh, 9.30 and gets to Glasgow at 5.21, about eight hours later. You do get an hour and a bit um, off as you go along. There's quite a bit of a gap at Fort William, but it's a beautiful route, absolutely gorgeous. Uh, that's at Fort William outside Morrison's, as you can see. That's at Carl of Lockhouse, another one at Carl of Lockhouse. That's at Portry Square. And then you finally get to Uig, and that's the ferry terminal. It used to go right next to the ferry itself, but it, it doesn't now. Now, you might say, oh, well, that's cheating. That's an express route. But it isn't. You can just get on and get a fare to the next bus stop. It, it is actually registered as a, as a bus route, and it is a fantastic route to travel on. What about Britain's shortest bus route? I'm indebted to the blogger Diamond Geezer. Do look at his blog if you haven't done. He's brilliant. And he recently said that the shortest London bus route, and I can't find one elsewhere nationwide, but do tell me if not, is the 399, sorry, 389, that goes from the Spires at Barnet, just down the hill past High Barnet Station to Western Way. It takes um, 10 minutes in one direction and 12 minutes in another, so it's 22 minutes out and back. If you know of a shorter route, let me know, because i love to get on it later this year. I had a little lunchtime journey on it. I have to say it wasn't overly busy. <laughs> what about Britain's narrowest road used by a bus route? Well, I reckon, it, I mean, there's loads of these around, but I would say that it's near Fishguard on the Strumble Shuttle that Pembrokeshire County Council and the National Park support. Um, it pretty much is this the whole way. Luckily, we didn't meet anything coming the other way because I don't think we would have been able, well, I don't know what we would have done, frankly. And now this, I'm sure you will know Britain's most precarious bus ride. It is, of course, the Needles Breezer. Everybody must have done the Needles Breezer. And if you haven't, you've got to get over to the Isle of Wight to do it very soon. It's an absolute wonderful ride right up to the battery. You get lovely views. And um, over the, around these hairpin bends as well, it's just gorgeous. Wonderful, wonderful. And, and uh, another award is it also has Britain's best bus stop. It's just on the edge there. I mean, it is absolutely both precarious, breezy, and delightful to, uh, to wait for a bus there. But actually, uh, I have to, I'm indebted to Sir Peter Hendy, who tweeted me this morning about this presentation, so I quickly added a reference to the fact that there is another best bus stop, and that is at New Zealand Camp. And there it is there, on the, on the lovely 23A Imba Running Day, which is perhaps one of Britain's, must be one of Britain's best bus routes. 
And of course, we have to add that bus stop in. It's the only London bus stop, the furthest London bus stop from the centre of London at Warminster Station. And a quick plug for the uh, Imber bus. I, I always, I, I like this at Chil Chitton Church because it reminds me of the Royal Forest Hotel uh, car park turning movement. So get yourselves out to Imber bus. And of course, Sir Peter did a, a wonderful presentation here not so long ago. Now. I do like a hairpin bend, and we just saw one on the needles breezer. Now, whether this is the most hairiest hairpin bend, but I reckon it's the best. It is on the lovely 300 route, which now sadly only runs in the summer uh, between Minehead and Lynmouth along the Somerset into Exmoor coast. It's a delightful route. It goes all along the A39 there, and the bit I'm talking about is just outside Porlock, up Porlock Hill. And those, the, these are the, the bus car in, in the eastbound direction stays on the A39. And, but in this direction, it can't do this hairpin bend because it would have to come right over to that side of the road and would meet the traffic. So in, the other di in this westbound direction, it takes this toll road, this yellow road, which is, you can see the contour lines, it's just one long cliff cliff a uh, ride up the up the hill and you can see the two hairpin bends so um let's take a look this is the first one love the set right ticket machine this is only taken last year the leaflets available yeah, I'm not sure he'd pass a test with this technique, to be honest. But he is a lovely driver, absolutely lovely driver. So that's pretty good. And we're on our way again. It is just one slow, steady climb for about 10 minutes, I think. And then this is the this is the other one, the, the one why it has to come this way. Note the sign, giving you a bit of a warning. <laughs> now th this is the perfect technique to take a hairpin bend. Watch the cyclist keeping well out of the way. See the cyclist? There he is, keeping out of the way. And he does it. He does it in one manoeuvre. Isn't that fantastic? Just. Just. He's obviously done it before. There we go. Watch out. Watch out for the... It's safe to come out now. There he goes. Isn't that wonderful? So that is Britain's best hairpin bend undertaken by a bus far as I can see and then when you get to the top I mean it goes on like that for about 10 minutes on the route when you get to the top the views down down to Lynmouth and, uh, are absolutely spectacular wonderful what about Britain's best ferry rides by bus uh, there's the famous route 50 of course from uh, Bournemouth and Boscombe down to Swanage absolutely delightful another great livery that, that Ray's done for, for that I love that road sign. <laughs> Such a lovely sort of warning sign saying it as it is. So that's the 50. And then there's the Tor Point Route 70 from Plymouth across, across to Tor Point on that ferry. And then there's the um, Guruk, Guruk across to Danoon uh, route that McGill's 907 do. Uh, that again is, a, a, again, a lovely route because you go all the way down that lock before you go over uh, uh, on, onto the ferry. Just a few awards for tight squeezes. Um, I must get the pronunciation right. M muzzle. Mousel. Mousel in Cornwall, on, uh, uh, which first, that was taken a while ago, first Colonel do. And then I think most of you, if you've been to the Isle of Wight and you've come on the West Cows Ferry, you will uh, admire the way Southern Vectis drivers managed to get their bus through this rather tight squeeze of a turn. Well, they don't all quite get it through that tight squeeze of a turn, but most of them do. And then, of course, we've got archways as well with tight squeezes, the lovely Bolton Abbey um, archway. from. I've, I've got a photograph of it without buses, but the trouble is the bus only runs about once a day, and so I don't like to 
spoil the point of not riding on the bus to get a photo of the bus with the Abbey, uh, with the arch, if you see what I mean. So I never quite got a bus with the arch as a photograph, so I only take it when I'm on the bus. And you can just sort of see the brickwork either side as he gingerly goes through. And then, of course, on the outskirts of King's Lynn, we have the X1. And then there's the wonderful 181. This was in the interregnum. It runs from York to Malton. Um, but it goes through Castle Howard. And um, you hear the lovely sound of the... Breathe in. A route that's now operated by uh, Transdev Blazefield under the branding York and Country. And off it goes to Castle Howard. Right, let's have a quick rundown of Britain's quirkiest. I love quirky bus routes. So let's have a quick look at some quirky bus routes. This runs... In, we'll start off in London. This runs in the summer on a Wednesday. I don't know if any of you have ridden it. It's the RP1. It's funded through lottery grant. It goes all the way round Richmond Park on a Wednesday. It's a beautiful route. It's absolutely delightful. So it sort of goes along all the, the, the broken line around the edge. Not, not the red route road, but just inside the park. And it takes visitors to different parts of the park, particularly the Isabella Plantation, which is well worth a visit for the rhododendrons uh, coming up in a few weeks' time. It, it will start, it runs on a Wednesday. It starts on the 17th of April for this year. And it's the only London bus route that you can see a horse-drawn lawnmower uh, out of the window. <laughs> and that you get uh, competition from deer uh, trying to beat you to, to the destination. Look at that one go, look at it. Absolutely wonderful. What other London bus route can you travel on with such beautiful views out of the window and lovely wildlife? So I do recommend this summer, you get yourselves over to Richmond Park and have a ride on it. It, it comes out of Richmond Park at Roehampton, where you can pick it up, or Ham Common, uh, and, and one or two other places as well. And here's Malcolm, he's the regular driver. Every year I go on it, he, he says to me he's going to retire next year because I think he's in his 70s. But I notice he's down to be doing it this year as well because he's asked people to email them if they've got accessibility issues so that we can, he can get the wheelchair on. He's a lovely guy and he gives you a running commentary as you go around the park as well. And this is at Ham Common where it connects sort of with the 65. And... Um, you can see he's bored out there. When, when I first went on the route, he said, uh, he, he was saying to me afterwards, he said, oh, it's so frustrating that TfL won't let him put the timetable in the panel on the bus stop. And I said, oh, I'll see what I can do about that. That's when I was still working for Brighton and Hove. So I emailed Leon Daniels and said, hey, you know, the great guy's doing, well, why don't you, can't you sort this? And I, I don't know if it was Leon personally, but he did. And I, a year later, I got on the bus further along the route, and this guy was telling some Americans who were on it, he didn't see me get on, I went to the back. He said, oh yeah, he said, this manager who works for Brighton and Hove buses, he got us my timetables in the bus stops. He was so thrilled. And I said, actually, I'm here, Malcolm. And he was so, I mean, he's such a lovely guy. So tell him I've sent you and we have, have, have a ride around. But he's so attentive. He, he, he parks the bus and he wanders over to check a, wa a waiting passenger there to, whether he wants the RP1. And he did. So he, br he brought him back. It was, it was absolutely lovely. Another great route, thanks to Mike Harris. I'm borrowing some of your wonderful maps. Isn't it crazy? Here we are in the capital city of an advanced nation, we have to rely on a bus enthusiast to produce the maps for London buses. Bad form, TfL, if you're listening or watching this. Anyway, have you ever had a ride on the, on the green route, the 812? Again, I recommend it. And I can't remember his name, but the driver of it is absolutely brilliant. He works for HCT, who, who, who run it. And it, it just goes through every twist and turn round in through the London borough of, of Islington. Here's another quirky bus route. OK, I'm cheating. It's a horse tram, not quite a bus route. But over in the Isle of 
man. Um, it is absolutely brilliant. What I love about it is the juxtaposition between the original technology of horsepower and the new technology of a ticket machine, especially when it tells you the name, not the bus number or the tram number, but the name of your horse. I think it's just absolutely delightful. And they change that if the horse changes during the day. It's, it's absolutely wonderful. And it's lovely to find something that health and safety hasn't quite got to, because the you know, the way the conductress, as you can see there, is, I mean, it's just wonderful, absolutely wonderful. Can you imagine that getting past health and safety on the mainland? Um, this was a bit of a surprise for me. It was a bit quirky because I love these once a month type routes. And I saw that there was a bus that ran the 2.30 from Carmarthen to Cardigan on the first Wednesday of the month out from Cardigan to more than one journey and back in the afternoon. And it goes all a circuitous way through the lovely Welsh hills. I thought that's the route for me. So I went all the way over to Carmarthen and it was about three o'clock, I think, in the afternoon. And I couldn't find a bus stop mentioning the 2.30. I couldn't find any reference to it. And then I noticed this coach there. I thought, well, perhaps that's it. And it, it was. And so when the passengers all turned up, you didn't, they didn't just get on it. They stowed all their shopping underneath. It was, it was lovely. Sadly, it's, it, it ceased last August, I, I was reading recently. Here's another lovely quirky bus route not far from here, that, which goes through Windsor Great Park. It's the only way you can legitimately go through Windsor Great Park, particularly to the area here called The Village, where uh, people live who work on the royal estate. And it, it is rather delightful, the O1. I'm not sure why the white bus call it the O1, but they do. And um, you find yourself going through this, the white gate, which you're not allowed to do in a car. You couldn't do that. So it's the only way to do this. And you're in the middle of... Now imagine, in the old days, you could be doing this and you might see... Uh, the, few, the Queen and Margaret on horseback, uh, it'd be absolutely delightful, wouldn't it? But what actually intrigued me about this route was that it's, there's a lot of running time, and the driver takes, he's, catches up with the running time by just stopping in the middle of the park. And so there we were, we spent just five minutes. No one said a word in the middle of Windsor Great Park. It was just bizarre. I kept thinking to myself, shall I go and ask if I can get out and take some photos? But I thought, well, maybe I better not. But it was five minutes. I'm not exaggerating. It was just delightful. I won't play the whole five minutes now. <laughs> but you get the idea. This is another lovely, quirky bus route. It's totally free for those of us who haven't yet got a concessionary pass. So it's delightful. And it runs from Romsey up to um, Stockbridge, up the, uh, the, 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 the uh, Test Valley. It is absolutely gorgeous. You, you can tell just looking at the, the, topo the, the geography here on this Ordnance Survey map. And the, beaut the great thing is it connects at Stockbridge with the Stagecoach 77 that takes you right on up to Andover. So it's a lovely, lovely trip out. And again, it's got a lovely driver and it waits at Mottisfont and Dunbridge Station. I just love the, the name, Mottisfont and Dunbridge Station. And then you get to Stockbridge. Here's another quirky bus route. It was before West Coast Motors took over Perryman, as they have now, but they still run this route. It's one of the very few bus routes, in fact, probably the only bus route that relies on the tide timetable to run because it goes out to Holy Island across the causeway there. And you have to watch that the, you get on the bus and get back before the tide comes in because otherwise it, it can't get you back. And finally, in my quirky section, um, OK, it's a bit of a cheat. It's, it's not so much a bus, although it's almost a bus. It's the sea tractor that goes from uh, Bigbury on Sea across to Burr Island. And again, it only runs when the tide is in a certain position. And you can't really get there by bus, unfortunately, because the, the route from Big, Beyond, Big, Big Bury on Sea is just a once a week journey into Plymouth and back. So if you got it back you, to get to here, you'd have seven days to wait till, till the next bus to, could take you back. But the great people who organised the Kingsbridge running day in September this year did a special trip to it and we could all then jump on this lovely sea tractor 
that takes you across to Burr Island. And it is, again, it's got to be on your bucket list as a, as a thing to do. OK, let's now leave quirkiness and come to the capital. And I thought I'd add a section of London, best London bus routes, as we're in London. And you have to, I think, I've got, I've got a split personality here from the southeast corner to the north because of my background as being a North Londoner. The southeast corner is lovely because it's a, it's a sort of way from Greater London through to Kent. And there are some lovely routes here. The 146 to Down and the gorgeous church it turns around. The, R, the circulars, the R5 and R10, one of the most least frequent London bus routes, of course. And through the lovely village of Knockholt which is gorgeous. The R7 similarly, and I love, it says the five bells there, Chelsfield Village. These all come from Orpington, of course, but I like the Maypole Bow Peep. It just, it just is lovely, isn't it? The Bow Peep pub. And of course, I mean, the drivers on these routes have a completely different discipline to London bus drivers on, on, on sort of main, main routes on both the R7 and the R8. The R8 is another great route down to Biggin Hill. Uh, and also, finally, the 246 down to Westrum, and in the summer, of course, all the way to Churchill's home in Chartwell, which that uh, photograph was taken. Again, well worth the route. But I love North London, because I was from North London, and I'm just going to divert a minute to mention a few terminuses, because I've got a thing, as I mentioned earlier, about... Um, turning circles and I just love Highgate Village turning circle it's gorgeous and, and I was worried they were going to do away with it recently but I believe that proposal's gone off the boil now um, it's just delightful it, just the way it curves around and also I uh, it's sort of this is current this is contemporary and yet it could be you could be waiting for a, a, a would it have been a six I don't know a trolley bus 611, thank you very much, yes. And our another favourite uh, little terminus in North London, while we're on terminal points, is m the lovely Muswell Hill Broadway, or BDY for short, as, as timetables used to know it. I just love it. And my, my local route was the 244 in RT days, and they used to sort of wait there. It was, it's just lovely. But actually, a, no the, a nice slick turn round. The, in fact, the slickest I've known just the other day when I was there, I thought, I must capture this on film. I've never seen this happen before. By the way, at Barnet Church, the traffic lights all suddenly worked in its favour for this driver, and he didn't have to stop for a second. Look at that. I reckon that was a one-off. I don't think it normally happens. Fantastic. Let's go further. Oh, then there's the lovely H3 route, because this is famous for being a route through the most expensive properties in London, the Bishop's Avenue. I mean, I went on it with Ray a couple of years ago, and uh, I think he was house hunting secretly, actually. <laughs> but he, uh, but the, the properties it goes via, I mean, obviously only takes the servants uh, on and off, off the buses, but it is gorgeous. And it, it doesn't have these nice little buses on now, because I think it's passed over to Met Metro Line, I believe. Is that right? Yeah. But anyway, this is my home territory, so I've got lovely, lovely memories of beautiful routes uh, around this neck of the woods. Um, oops. Uh, the W9, uh, I remember going on the very first, I'm sounding geeky now, first full transit when it was introduced in the early 70s. Now goes from Chase Farm Hospital all, all, all the way to Southgate. But it's gorgeous because it, it, it takes you th through the, as I mentioned earlier, the lovely Holden um, bus design bus station around Southgate Station through Winchmore Hill Green, which is absolutely gorgeous. Gr where, near where I used to live at Grange Park Station in the Grange Way. And then inside Sullivan, great bus operator. They do these little history things as well to really give you a bit of nostalgic kick. I love the 251 on that central section along Totteridge Common. Again, some very expensive properties that you go by. Gorgeous. I love the east-west, because there's a lot of these east-west, you'll notice. The old 107, which used to be Enfield Lock, of course, but uh, and 107A, but brims down right across to Edgware and used to be to Queensbury. But now, of course, it's split into two, the, the 107 as well as the 307. And then I also, in the old days, I mean, what, what, what could be better than getting on a 242 in Chinkford and going all the way to South Mims through Hertfordshire, Essex and Hertfordshire and back in? Absolutely gorgeous. 
sadly now it's a shadow of its former self, hardly runs at all between Waltham Cross and Potter's Bar, sadly. And of course you can't do anything without mentioning the 84, which occasionally you get a double decker on. And goodness knows how people who don't really know their bus numbers get on, because it looks like a London bus, but you can't use your oyster on it and uh, all, all sorts of confusion. I love the 313. I've never been able to track down the double deck that goes on the 313, but I believe there is one. But uh, even a single deck is lovely up the ridgeway there. But I think one of my favourite routes is the 298, which is now a Sullivan route as well. Because of, I mean, it says it's Cock Foster's Road up here, but I know it as Stag Hill. Oh, and you, you can get the occasional double deck on it as well. And it, here it is, Stag Hill. What I like about this is that you sort of, you feel the driver getting ready. He's got his foot down and he's, he's going to make Stag Hill whoa, as quick as he can. You just get... Sort of, and, you, and also these days you see half of Potter's Bar Garage coming out of service the other way, going into, into service. But you, you think you're leaving London and you look either side and you're coming into Hertfordshire. It's just, it's just a lovely way of saying goodbye to, to, to London, I always feel. But my absolute favourite route of all is not the whole route, the W3, because frankly, uh, Northumberland Park, I don't know if any of you come from Northumberland Park, it's not the most salubrious of areas, say. I mean, White Hot, Tottenham Hotspur have pretty much taken over all of this area as well. Now they even want to rename the station I hear at White Hart Lane. But what I love about the W3, which goes from Northumberland Park to Finsbury Park, is this bit here. You cannot beat that bit of route. For me, it is the best bit of bus route. You, you get a taste of it as you bump up and down the... Um, the, 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 the sleeping policeman on the roads. You get a taste of it, and then it slowly climbs up. And I think it's best this direction, Finsbury Park towards Northumberland Park, because you just slowly, slowly come to the top of the hill by Alexandra, Pal uh, Alexandra Palace there. And then, I don't know why I didn't sit in the front seat, but I, I thought I'd get a better vista. And then you look round and you just get a lovely view over the whole of London going down to Docklands and Canary Wharf and right across to the, the city of London and see the, the way that you have to go over the sleeping policeman, of course, as well. So it's, it's gorgeous. And, and then you get off the bus and look and just see the, the sheer delight of Alexandra Palace. So for me, that's the, the best bus route in London, or the bit of it. It's only a little bit. Right, a few interurban good routes now, because interurbans are the workhorses. I think they're the most successful part of the bus industry now. Some wonderful routes that a lot of bus companies are putting investment into to develop both the vehicles and the frequencies and the way they sell them. And I think they offer a great alternative to using your car or, in some cases, even the train. Uh, mentioned earlier about the, with the number, the 36. I mean, it, it is an absolute brilliant route now. Every 10 minutes between Leeds and Harrogate, every 20 minutes on, on to Ripon, and has to be one of the best interurban routes. I also mentioned in the number, the 12, but the views are just spectacular over the Cookmere Valley. Uh, it, it's just, it, and, the, and the latest livery is brilliant. You get a look at Beachy Head and the Seven Sisters if you get out and have a walk. I mean, it, it is absolutely gorgeous. That cyclist needs to be careful there. But um, the X5 is brilliant from Oxford right across to Cambridge. That's a lovely route, interurban route, as is the Derby, Nottingham, uh, Trent Barton operated Red Arrow. You see what I mean about best impressions liveries? There's Ray smiling down the front here. As is this one as well, another one, which, and all credit to Stagecoach for putting this route on. I was a bit sceptical as to whether it would last, but it goes from Bristol all the way down to Plymouth, and apparently, and it seems to be, doing remarkably well. And it was a huge gamble they took to put this a brand new interurban route on. Huge resource uplift, and good for them because it does seem to be doing well. And then a more sort of localised interurban route, which I really like, and again has seen amazing investment in new vehicles, is the Winchester Southampton uh, Blue Star operated Route 1. Uh, it's a shame that the old Jurassic Coaster route, which used to go from Poole all the way to Exeter, used to be a bit of a four and a half hour, have your packed lunch on the way, uh, have a toilet stop at Bridport, thank goodness, um, bus ride, but now they've split it and it, it's really centred on Axminster with two routes uh, through to, um, uh, either through to, uh, where does it go, Bridport, I can't remember now, uh, uh, or, or to Dorchester. Um, and also they have um, put in a much better livery now because that, that wasn't so good, it 
didn't really. But you get a lovely view of Cheshire Beach uh, coming down in the easterly direction, and uh, as well as all the insects on the windscreen, the dead insects that prevent that spoil your photographs. This is a great route, the Seven Express uh, from. Uh, Bristol across to Chepstow over the Seven Bridge. Again, an insect splattered windscreen. Why don't bus companies clean their windscreens better? Um, and you get a lovely view of the new Seven crossing as well. I like this interurban route too, from Liverpool up to Southport and, as it says there, then Preston, the Stagecoach X2. And again, it's a typical route of investment in new vehicles, fantastic comfort, much better than an old pacer or alternative that, might be, that the trains might offer. Uh, Arriva up in the northeast do some fantastic interurban routes. This one, the uh, X18 from Berwick all the way down to Newcastle. It's a lovely route, as is their route from Middlesbrough down to Whitby and Scarborough, where there's no uh, train journey equivalent now between Whitby and Scarborough. You can take It's a lovely ride on the Esk Valley line, the railway line from Whitby to Middlesbrough, and I do recommend combining the two. But it does go through uh, the North Yorkshire Moors, through Guy Giesborough, Giesborough, and again, it, it, it's fantastic. Just a mention of, of, of Wales, that sounds a bit odd to say, but uh, I, I love this network of routes in Wales. The, they've come a long way since the old Traws Cambria route. The Traws Cymru routes are absolutely brilliant because they complement the rail services that generally, other than the Heart of Wales line, go east-west. And so these routes that the, the Welsh Government and the Welsh Assembly have put in and funded and now got to quite a well-organised network. There's the T1 that goes from Carmarthen to Aberystwyth, the T2 from Aberystwyth up to Bangor, which is a lovely route with some gorgeous scenery to, to take you along the way. The T3 is brilliant because you can get a double-decker on that uh, from Barmouth west, eastwards right across to Wrexham. Uh, and it's, uh, that's the bar lovely Barmouth Bridge you see as you leave Barmouth. And then just some beautiful scenery as, as, as you go along. I do recommend a trip on the T3 if, if you're going to do any of the um, Trawls Cymru routes. The T4 is the trunk route from Cardiff up the valleys through Merthyr and then on to Brecon and, and Newtown. And they're all nicely decent vehicles to travel on now. Um, the Welsh Government have done a really good job. The T5 from Haverford West up to Aberystwyth and the T6 from Swansea to Brecon. Just recently, last September, they've introduced a new one, the T12 from McCunclith to Wrexham. Um, it hasn't Apparently, it's not of a certain quality to be branded as Tros Cymru yet, but hopefully, no doubt, it will be soon. It's operated jointly, as you can see there, by Lloyd's Coaches and Tanet Valley. A non Tros Cymru route, but equally fantastic one that goes east-west through Wales, is the X75 uh, from Shrewsbury to Llandilos, uh, and it is wonderful, lovely route. Another, going up now into Scotland, another great route, interurban route, is run by, as you can see there, Borders buses. It used to be First Bus, but they pulled out when the Tweed Bank Railway, the Borders Railway, reopened, because that really did damage the, uh, the number of people travelling. And indeed, uh, Borders buses split the route, so you can't go all the way through. You have uh, half an hour at Gala, that's Gala Shields Interchange, as you can see. Um, that's in Edinburgh, but at, at the, so at least you've got time to get off, have a have a bit of a stretch of the legs, and take a few photographs. And the the, the train station, the new train station or reopened train station, is right by the bus station, which is pretty good. But all the way down, you're pretty much parallel in the the railway, and the railway is hugely popular. It's amazing. I mean, it's beaten all records of uh, of anticipated passenger loadings. Sadly, though, the bus only had about three or four of us on, and and it does worry me that, 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 that Borders buses are going to have to work hard to keep it going. Another great, in Scotland, another great network of express or interurban routes is the Stagecoach East operated Express Connect from Edinburgh up to St Andrews and the Fife Coast. It's, it's just brilliant, these routes, and they have some really decent bus coaches, but now they've got these new Plaxton sort of what we would have called semi-coaches in the old days, or dual purpose, where you've got a flat section, uh, a low floor section, as, as well as a section at the back to get a nice view from as well. 
and they're quite lovely, decent seats as, as well. And a, a complimentary on the west coast from Glasgow down to um, Dumfries and Galloway, Stagecoach West Scotland do, an, again, another great network of interurban bus routes. There's the X74, uh, which goes down to Dumfries. And again, you, you feel like you're on top of the world in these seats. They're, they're lovely seats, and they're, you're, you're quite high up, as you can see, lovely view. And again, from Kilmarnock, they've put these new beauties on the X76 into Glasgow. And again, I'm not necessarily a great lover of uh, leather seats. I find these seats just as comfortable and enjoyable to take a ride in. Let's have a quick little quick rip around the coast. Just a few routes of highlight here. You, you have to have a ride on the 899. This runs from Seaton across to Sidmouth. But do it so that you go through Branscombe because the blue route there. Because... Um, Let's just sort of zoom in. The, this bit here is just gorgeous, the views. I was so mesmerised by them that I forgot to take any photographs. Well, actually, I did take one, but there was a hedge in the way. But, and, and, the, and the bus isn't exactly the most um, lost... <laughs> well, it is, yeah, never, never say much about the bus, but the, it's worth it for the view. It only goes, uh, I think, four times a day through Branscombe, but it's worth having doing that and stagecoach down in uh the tall bay area do again a fantastic network of routes uh it's difficult to pick one out to be honest they're all they're all pretty good but people talk about the dawlish wall but actually the dawlish wall is just as good on the on the two as well on on the bus that goes down there uh they recently introduced uh, open top buses as well reintroduced them and they they're worth a ride the three across from dartmouth to kingsbridge uh, and plymouth is a fantastic route, which I would say is probably one of the best. Sadly, uh, they no longer run double decks on it, and so uh, you can't get views from high above as I did here on, on my journey uh, a couple of years ago. Uh, this is another great route from um, Tor Point across to Liscard, the 75. Again, it's sad that it's a single deck. I think there is an occasional double deck on it, but great views of the coast. And First Kerno's network around uh, Cornwall is brilliant as well. The 90, uh, 96 from Bude that comes all the way to Camelford and then through Port Isaac and uh, Poleseth, uh, Bos Bosgastle is lovely, absolutely gorgeous. But the 95 is also, although it's not coastal, it comes all the way down to Truro. And it's a long ride, but it's pretty good. But this is a winter map in the summer, the Penzance Land's End buses continue on round the coast to St Ives and then continue back to Penzance. It's a circular you can do and it runs pretty frequently as well and they're just starting it um, earlier this year I was reading uh, and uh, it's pretty good and they're, they're um, branded as Atlantic Coasters which is nice. That's at Land's End as you can see and that's at St Ives which is uh, one of the most precarious bus stations in the UK if you've ever been there. And that's, uh, um, that's uh, remind me, Senon Cove, that's right, sorry, yep. And again, tight squeezes all the way around, fantastic professional driving. And then finally, on a little flavour of coastal routes, I have to mention the Coast Hopper, which goes from Cromer to Wells Next to Sea, Hunstanton, and down to Kings Lynn. Now, this has had a bit of a funny history recently because Ben Colson, my great friend Ben Colson made it, brought it to the fore when he ran Norfolk Green. Um, but then he sold Norfolk Green to Stagecoach, who did this, again, this wonderful investment of new vehicles and a lovely livery for Coast Hopper along the, a lot. doesn't it just, it just invites you to want to travel on it. And as you can see, it's a very busy route as well. And the, the, they do connections in Wales next to the sea, which this is. And then, of course, as we know, Stagecoach packed up and decided to turn their back on, uh, on the Kings Lynn and form a Norfolk Green operation. And, but luckily, uh, local operators, Sanders Coaches, took one half of the route over from Wells Next to the Sea over to Cromer. And the lovely Julian Patterson, who originally set up Connect Bus and now runs Lynx Bus, he took over the Hunstanton side of the route. And uh, you can just see how popular it, it is. Doesn't that's lovely and scenic. Um, now, last year, uh, a lovely guy called Paul Kirkby, he, he did an online poll 
to find Britain's most scenic bus route and invited people to vote. And this won it, as you can see. Uh, um, it's the 840, which we'll see again a bit later, but it runs from Whitby down through to York and then uh, Pickering, York, and then across to Leeds, which I have to say has sections of route that isn't completely scenic as well if you're coming out of Leeds on the York Road. Uh, but a bit like my W3, perhaps, there's certain parts of this route that are just spectacular, particularly north of Pickering it, it, and across the North Yorkshire Moors. These are lovely scenic routes as well. They, they're in the New Forest National Park. They're run by Moorbus and Old Blue Star. And they're, they're, there's three, the, and they're all nicely colour-coded, the blue, the green, and the red route. And they're amazingly popular. They, they, they run them only in the school holidays because they're run with buses that are otherwise used on with the tops on on school buses but I, I traveled on them and as you can see this in this summer they I mean, it's just gorgeous they, they they were very very busy I love this uh, scenic route which is branded as the Bronte bus it's now numbered b3 rather than 500 it goes from Keithley uh, through Bronte country through Haworth and then up, uh, down to uh, Hebden Bridge uh, and it is Again, it's just gorgeous views. I want to just spend a minute or two on Moore's bus because this is a wonderful, a bit like as we'll come to, Dale's bus. These are two uh, networks that are run by volunteers. I mean, it's just bizarre, isn't it, that, that we have bus routes, rural bus routes, that everyone else has given up on, local authorities and national parks, and we rely on volunteers forming a sort of charitable institution to run a bus network and Moore's buses are fantastically I'm pleased to say becoming even more successful operation so much so they're starting off a bit earlier this year uh, for, for, the, for the summer period um, I love the roots the, the barrenness of the North Yorkshire Moors I mean you can just look at look at the, gr the brown I was a geographer so I just revel in brown contour lines on an ordnance survey map but you probably can't see it but there's the the Lion Inn pub there and it's in the absolutely the middle of nowhere and uh, and it's only served by these Moors buses buses on a Friday Saturday and Sunday they actually do run on Fridays as well and the the, the views are spectacular then they, they all uh, quite a few of them come down to Helmsley, um, which on a Sunday is one of these meccas for bikers, and they sort of take over the square, but uh, luckily the bus has its own little um, place there so that bikers can't spot there. Also in Helmsley is the... Um, that wasn't, it was a temporary Blackburn Bus Company livery, but this was uh, now part of York and Country, uh, branded buses, the 31X, which goes from York uh, through to uh, Helmsley, which Transit Blazefield do, and it goes past the lovely Byland Abbey, where you, you can get, with the sun's in the wrong place, you get yourself in the picture, taking the picture, as well as the bus and the, and the abbey, because the driver kindly waits time there for a little while. Uh, this, this route is delightful. It's the 15 and the 16. It's up in Northumberland, in the Northumberland National Park. And it goes from Rothbury uh, through the Coquert Dale. I don't know if I've pronounced that right. Coquert Dale. Um, it's now PCL Travel. But Spirit Buses, there was a lovely guy who ran this bus company for a while, and, but he couldn't keep it going, sadly. But he, on the, Ray and I and another friend, uh, Martin, from Reading Buses at the time, we went up there on this last bus, and it was lovely. He had a trombone player on it, and it, it was just gorgeous atmosphere and stopped for us all to enjoy the scenery. More local to the southeast, this is a lovely scenic bus ride, the 387 from Tring to Aldbury Pond. I just love the destination, Aldbury Pond, and if I didn't know it, I'd just have to go there to see how lovely Aldbury Pond is. And it, it is, it's just delightful that you can get this, uh, what is now Red Rose, uh, maybe even somebody else by now. Other scenic bus routes uh, in the southeast. I love the East Kent network. I did work in Ashford for a couple of years, many years ago, so I have fond memories of that. But you can virtually take any of these buses and actually any of these routes, and the Kent countryside is, is actually fantastic. I particularly like the number 11, which comes from Canterbury up here, and it, it's really rural in nature and it has double decks on it. But it is quite tricky for the drivers, as we found out on our route. 
and I, we were just sitting here, and more and more cars were joining, um, were joining the queue, and this tractor driver realised we couldn't back up, and he tried to back up, but the guy here wouldn't go any further, and we just sat, sat there, so I thought, right, I'd better do something. So I went downstairs, I said to the driver, do you want me to sort something out? He said, oh, if you could. So I, I went to the back of the queue and started telling them all, more and more were joining, look, you've got to come into the, you've got to come into this dog and duck and park. But I soon realised the reason he wasn't moving, he said, I can't reverse. <laughs> so, <laughs> it happens, it happens. So anyway, we, I got in and we sorted it out in the end and we got on our way. And then we went a bit further on, and then the old dustman turned up. So it, it, it was a bit of a tricky journey, to be honest, from one end to the other. And we got to Broadstairs about 30 minutes late in the end. But it was a lovely, lovely experience. I love this area as well, the Forest of Dean. I mean, it doesn't really give you much clue here, but look at the Ordnance Survey map. It is a forest, the Forest of Dean. And there's some lovely routes that Stagecoach run uh, under the branding Y&D and, and Beyond. Um, the 31 in particular is brilliant. Uh, the Peak District, aside from Devon, I think Derbyshire is my other favourite county for scenic bus routes and lovely rides. Um, and uh, not least of which is the, oh yes, you can get, I should say, this, for those of us without a concessionary pass, this is a wonderful bargain because it gives you um, travel for 6 50 with a senior rail card on buses and trains throughout Derbyshire for the day. And it's brilliant, um, Derbyshire Wayfarer. Brilliant ticket. Anyway, there's the Trans Peak route, famous route that once went from Nottingham all the way through to Manchester, a bit like the trains. And um, it now goes from Derby to Matlock to Bakewell to Buxton, pretty much along the A6. It's a lovely route, well worth doing, very busy and popular. I love the 65, which goes this way through the Peak District, from Buxton through Tideswell and Grindleford and um, through to Sheffield. And I went to get it the other, not so long ago, and I thought, my goodness, we're not all going to get it on a single decker, which is what it is. But luckily, they were all, this is in Sheffield, they were all waiting for the 272. Um, uh, Barry mentioned the good and the bad as you go around. I mean, who thought of putting that on a scenic bus route? I don't know. Look at it. Anyway, we won't do that tonight. This is, I've, I've travelled on the 65 pretty much once a year for the last seven or eight years, and it used to be run by TM Travel when they were independently owned. Uh, with uh, double decks, and then it went to single deck, and then um, uh, Trent Bar Wellglade and uh, Julian Pedals Company took it over, and Peaks and Dales they branded as now, and now recently Stagecoach have taken over the route as a tender. The 61 to Glossop is also a pretty good route, um, as is the 442 from Buxton that comes all the way this way round here to Ashbourne, again a lovely route. And I, but my favourite, my new favourite, because I only found this out from a tweet recommendation last year, is the 173 from Bakewell uh, through to Castleton. And in particular, you need to get a journey that does this grey bit of route here through Sesbrook rather than the orange bit because... Um, it comes up this amazing hill here, and again, I was so intrigued by it, I forgot to take a photograph, but I did manage, I got to take a bit of footage before we went uh, up, up the hill, down the hill and up the hill. You get a, just a glimpse of the old railway line, the old Great Grand Central, Great Central Railway line there. The 172 is also a great route, that's the sort of other end of it, that's the 173. And then the 172 takes you this way from Bakewell all round here, delightful to, to Mackwell. I said Devon's my other favourite place, all these routes are brilliant, out of Exeter uh, up to West, um, across to Oakhampton, and, and the, they're just absolutely lovely. But I did like from Tavistock when I was there not so long ago, two or three years ago now, Soon after I retired, in fact, this would be back in 2013, the very first summer I went to Tavistock, and I thought, I know what I'll do, I'll get the 87 to Bear Alston, and blow me down, that came in the bus station. I thought, why, well, you're following me around here, <laughs> because they, they bought the bus and didn't re-liver it yet. Uh, but actually, I do like the 79 out to uh, Callington via Callstock, because it goes via... 
um, this lovely the railway that goes up to Gunny's Lake. And you can get the lovely railway line and then connect to there. And this is another great route from Oakhampton down to Newton Abbott, skirting Dartmoor, um, run by country bus. And then finally, I would mention these routes here, the 49 to Haybrook Bay and Wembury Point and the 94 to Nos Mayo, which are both run by Target Travel. And um, the bus does one route and then the other. And again, lovely views the whole way through. Devon there and again narrow roads the Lake District every route here is absolutely brilliant Stagecoach I reckon do a fantastic job uh, with their commercial network no subsidy at all uh, across the Lake District we've mentioned the 555 and its popularity you can just see the queue waiting for it there at uh, Keswick bus station uh, in, in the middle of the summer you, you, well not wasn't in the middle of the summer you can tell from the uh, coats but it, it is amazingly popular as a route and um, you think the Lake District might be just all lakes but actually there's a lot of uh, mountains as well there's a bit of lake um, but the, again it's the only area where you have all right the year round open top buses to enjoy the scenery from as well this is a great circular route you can see how popular it is the 77A and the 77 to Buttermere the 78 down to Sea Toller is absolutely brilliant with some lovely views the 505 to Coniston, the 516 to Gills Dun 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 Gills Dungeon. Now the X12, sadly, from Coniston to Alverston has has now pretty much ceased because that was subsidised, and the company that runs it can hardly do it without any subsidy. But they do run a taxi bus, I'm told. But my favourite of all is the 508. It's just a shame it's not double deck. It runs from Penrith through to Windermere, and it, it is absolutely wonderful. Um, you just slowly climb up to Kirkston Pass, uh, slowly, slowly, and uh, it's just wonderful. And then you get to Kirkston Pass at the top, and I can't do justice to the spectacular views. The Dales National Park, well, this, is, there, this route is famed. I don't know if you watched it, but BBC Four did one of these slow, whatever they call them, slow programmes, and it, it lasted all evening. They just put a camera on the front of this bus from Richmond, but actually it starts in way back over in Middlesbrough, I think, and goes all the way to Hawes. And these were taken from my television, <laughs> these, these pictures, just to show you how... how I can never get pictures like this, uh, so showing it's so delightful. But anyway, I went on it the next, su the next Sunday from it being broadcast. And these two ladies who'd who appeared in it, they were full of it. And they were telling everyone, oh, did you see us? And whatever, whatever. I said, yes, I did. And of course, they, were, they bagged the best seats on a, on a single deck. I, I spotted that immediately I got on. But they, they were pointing out everything to me. And then they said, when we get to Ingleton, you need to get the 881 behind to Malham. They, they knew what they were doing. And there they were in the best seats again. And I followed them round for the whole day. And they showed me round. But my favourite route is the, Le the sort of Wakefield Leeds Halls route that goes through Grassington and Buckton. It used to be called the 800 years ago. I've done it every year for a few years now. But it's now sort of the 874 and sometimes 875. The numbers change. It only runs in the summer right through to Hawes. But this is the last Sunday of last year's operation, round about the end of September. I mean, it's just full of people chatting away waiting to ready to go for their walk not a fares taken as you can see from the average age of the of the participants but pretty much not but it's a lovely noisy bus ride i love the 856 which goes from hawes across to north allerton um, and, and this is operated by the Upper Wolfdale Bus Company. It's a community bus. And in the week, it links with the Keithley Bus Operated 72 uh, to the 72A and 72B that takes you up to Buckden, where you have a lovely couple of hours or hour to wander around and enjoy the scenery. Right, I'm just going to do a very quick um, trip. In Wales, there's only three areas, I would say where the best bus routes are, as opposed to the interurban routes I've mentioned as Traws Cymru. And that's in the Gower, the Pembrokeshire coast, and Snowdonia National Park. In the Gower, they've, they've really improved these routes from the years, years ago when I worked there, 40 years ago. You couldn't get from the south bit of the Gower to the north bit in those days, but now you can. And they, they're, they're, sadly, they're not very well used, but there are connections between the 118, which goes along the south bit from Swansea to Rossilli and uh, Portainen 
and the 116 along the north bit, this, other, this route now shuttles between the two. Sadly, I was the only passenger on it, so I hope it keeps going. You get some lovely sheep views. And then on the Pembrokeshire coast, there's these lovely named Puffin Shuttle Celtic coasters. I mean, they, they just make you want to travel on them, don't they? The Poppet Rocket. And they also connect. Uh, so you can connect with the 315 onto the, uh, whatever it is, the 311, I think. They're, they're just gorgeous. And they're, they're all sort of dulled up, lovely, gorgeous. And there's, there's one of the connections that works really well. And the, even the bus shelters join in the spirit of it as, as well. And this is the best route. This was the one I mentioned about the narrowest road. It takes about, I should think, an hour and a half to go from St. David's, the country's smallest city, of course, uh, through to uh, Fishguard. Yeah, that's where it goes to. And it's lovely. You get a lovely view of the Strumble Lighthouse, where, the, again, the bus waits time for about five minutes. And that's the... Um, narrow road we saw earlier and then this network is great as well in the Snowdonia area the Sherpa um, the the Snowden Sherpa routes the S the, these are traditional routes the 867 and the 85 and the 88 but the S2 links you through to Betsy Coed that's worth a ride as is the S4 that takes you up to Carnarvon and the S97 that comes through to Porth Maddock. You have to watch your timings to get the connections right. Express Motors, uh, we won't say too much about them, they went out of business for reasons that we don't like. Uh, they used to run the network and I travelled on them a couple of years ago and I was amazed when I was on one to see a double deck coming my way. I thought, oh my goodness, I didn't plan that very well because to get a double deck through Snowdonia would be an added bonus. But now, I went last year, they're run by uh, this operator, Gwynvor. Another great route in the area is you get the train, you can, well actually the train's brilliant as well, down this uh, river, the River Conwy. Conwy? Yeah, down to Betsy Coed and um, Blyneau for Stiniog, the train goes on to. But you can get a bus either down this side of the valley, or the green route, or even better, come down on the 19, down the brown, the brown route, down this side of the valley. And then it goes across to Lanfrist and then comes down, because there it is there. From, you get it from Llandudno Junction. Brilliant. Right, finally, we're going up to Scotland, my favourite part of the uh, British Isles. The best bus routes are definitely in Scotland. There is no doubt. Um, this is a little favourite of mine, I do. You get the train up to Inverness. You get the train from the far north line and get off at Laird. And where you get from Leg, what have we got next? Oh, yes, you can then get the bus that comes only once a day, but it connects with the train, as I'll show you, to Durness. And there, if you want to be really adventurous, you can go across to Cape Roth. Or you come on to Tongue. Where's Tongue? There. And then back to Leg. So... You start off at Leg on the far north bus, which connects with the train, and it will wait half an hour in case the train's late, which sometimes it is. It's the most wonderful ride. You generally are on your own. You get your OS map out and try and follow the locks and the hills and the forests as you go along. And it, it, it just goes on for miles and miles and miles of nothingness, but just beautiful scenery. Occasionally, you get another vehicle coming the other way. And then when you get to Durness, if you do it on a Tuesday, then when you get to Durness at about 20 past two, you wait an hour, and on a Tuesday only, there's a community bus that takes you to Tongue, Tuesday afternoon. And again, that's a fantastic route. I mean, it doesn't take long point to point, but you come all the way down here and all the way back up again. And all the way across, it's lovely. Transport for Tongue, I love that. Transport for London. Transport for Tongue, it's their one vehicle operation. But again, it's a lovely, friendly driver. And there's usually a regular lady who travels as a passenger on it. She comes from Tongue, comes and does a bit of shopping in Durness. There's just the one shop. And then goes back again. Um, she sits in the front seat. Just a tip. Don't take the front seat. It's her seat. But we, it, it was amazing because we passed this zip wire and it was about the time that old Boris Johnson got stuck on the zip wire. Do you remember? And we, we had amusements with that. And then, anyway, you stay in Tongue. There's a couple of nice hotels, small hotels, Tuesday night. And then Wednesday, 
morning, transport for Tongue bus comes down back to Leg again. So it's a lovely little route round. But when I used to do it, of course, it was the only surviving post bus from Tong down to Leg, And uh, it, you, there's Leg post office. And it was lovely. And old Sheila, she was the post lady, who used to empty the boxes along the way and take you along. But sadly, the post bus needed replacing. And Highland Council, Highs Trans, they call it, wouldn't fund Royal Mail to pay for the extra cost to put three seats in the back of the replacement vehicle. So it just stopped. So Transport for Tongue now do it on a Wednesday. And so this was quite a busy ride. We had a ride down and again you go through for ages and ages and ages through nothingness until you get to Altnahara here and there's nothing there and I was amazed that a lady got on. I don't know where she came from but there was nothing. There was not, not a house in sight. I looked for miles and she he issued her with a ticket which was even more surprising. Another great Scottish route is the X99 that goes from Inverness up to Thurso and Wick, which is as good as the Far North Rail Line. I would recommend going up with one and coming back down the other, because this route hugs the coast, whereas the, the rail line goes in quite a way to Lerg, of course, and it is very popular. I love this route as well, as I love the rail line from Fort William to Maleg. It's beautiful, but again, it's worth trying the bus, shield buses, They've expanded. They've taken over all of Stagecoach's routes in Fort William. Beautiful route. Uh, I've got loads of photographs of that route, but I won't bore you with them all, and time's moving on. Uh, this is a great route, the West Coast Motors route from Fort William down to Oban. And someone recommended to me when I did one of these talks, the 60, 95 that Stagecoach run from St Andrews all the way around the coast uh, to Leven, and it really is a fantastic route, as is uh, mentioned earlier, the, 9 1, the 917 to Danoon. The Isle of Arran is brilliant to do. All the buses, you get a Broderick, Brodick bus station. You get the ferry over from um, uh, Andros Androssen, and then you can either go one way round on the 324, or another way round on the 324, or you can go across. And when I went in the middle of the summer, it was packed, the bus station, and they had to run extras uh, to get us all, all, all away, which they did. It was really good. And lovely views all around the island. I love the island of Mull. Uh, I love the route that goes up to Tobamori from Craig Neu, where the ferry comes, and down to Finnefor and over to the island of Iona, you can go, not by bus. Uh, the bonus on the Tobamori is it's double deck, brilliant. And the Craig Muir is just a brilliant ride. I love this because I did it as a teenager, went on holiday to a little island near Iona. And it's just, it brings back such happy memories. The road just goes on like that for miles. And you, you have to watch out for um, impediments along the way of all kinds. <laughs> Uh, the Isle of Skye is great from Portree to do these circuits. They're very, very popular. They're very busy if a cruise ship has landed uh, near Portree, so you have to watch that. Again, lovely views out the windows. But I'm going to bring this to a conclusion now by, although we have, with time, we've got a couple of other sections. But I just want to mention this, because when I gave this talk a year ago, I said that you can go from, this is the Outer Hebrides, that you can go from Castle Bay in the south by Ombarra, because there's seven islands in the Outer Hebrides, up to Stornoway in a day. You can, you, you can do it in five buses across four causeways and two ferries. And you leave Barra at nine o'clock and you get to Stornoway about five o'clock. I got stuck here because I forgot that the ferry here is tidal. And you've got to watch your tide times as well as your bus times. And the connection doesn't work if the tide, uh, on about a third of the year, I had no idea. I just looked at the bus times. Because the buses still run. It's just that nerds like me can't go from one end to the other. Not many people do, you see. So I, I, I got stranded in Lochmaddy and managed to get a ferry across to Ewig and gave up. Anyway, I was encouraged by the feedback I got from the talk. And the guys after me said, afterwards said to me, oh, when you're there you, at, Lever, at Tarbert, which is there, you must take the bus out to here, you must take the bus out to there. So I thought, right, I'm going back. So I went back in uh, September, August, September time, planned a much more longer 
stay in, all, in um, the Outer Hebrides and did lots of different bus routes. But I did it southbound from Stornoway to Castle Bay. You can do it both directions. And this is it. Oh, uh, you, la uh, you can land at Stornoway Airport. It's not, not, not quite handy. You get the bus from Stornoway Airport into Stornoway Bus Station. And they, the timetable is all displayed very nicely. You get a Hebridean Transport uh, W10 from Stornoway down to Tarbot, bus number one. It says it's going to Leverborough, Leverborough but it, it drops you off in Tarbot. Lovely views along the way. The best bit is um, Lewis and Harris, the northernmost islands. And that's Tarbot there, it's not on my map. And then you'd have to change buses in Tarbot where there's a bit of a bus station. I love the way they've got all the numbers there. Puts TFL to shame almost. And then you get in a smaller bus run by Hebridean Transport, bus number two from Tarbot to Leverborough, which then meets the first ferry. Uh, lovely connection there. Works all right. Then you get to um, uh, Burnaray, there's a little island there where you will be on to the um, Grenitote W16, which connects with a DA Travel W17, which will take you through some of the causeways through to er Ericsay, and you finally arrive here at Lock, Boise, Lock Boysdale to get the ferry down to Barra. Oh, I should mention along the way, those are the two causeways. And then the minibus drops you there. You can see how handy is the ferry there. I just want to mention, when I went in the other direction, I got off the ferry and walked round to this bus stop. There was no bus there. I thought, right, let's just check the times. <laughs> and there was no mobile phone signal. You, you do feel a bit anxious, to be honest, because your whole day, the ferry's meanwhile gone, and you're just standing there. I went to the waiting area, and luckily there were the timetables. Anyway, on the, back, on the way, the ferry coming back, look, as a bonus... Whey! Dolphin. There were loads of them, but would they come out when you're filming? No. <laughs> that was the only... I just managed to get sneak a little one. Anyway, then you get the bus, it meets the ferry again, and uh, it takes you to Castle Bay. And then, the bonus is, you can fly out from Barra on the UK's only runway on a beach. It's a brilliant, brilliant takeoff. Absolutely brilliant. And, never mind security on that, that airline. You can go and help, help the pilot. I also want, then did the same. You can do exactly the same on Shetland Islands. You can go from one end, there's three islands here, from one end, Sumbra, up to Balta Sound in the very north of Shetland. Um, you, it's three buses, two ferries. And so you land at Sumbra in the airport. You get the bus to uh, Lerwick, which has connections along the way, which work really well. And also, these buses take parcels. I mean, it's, it's a whole operation, this is. I mean, it was really good. I have to say I was impressed, parcel buses. And then you have a little bit of a break in Lerwick, and you get the Jameson's <laughs> Coaches bus. No one takes tickets in Scotland, I found out. <laughs> other than I said, can I have my ticket? I wanted a sort of record of it. And you know, the driver, meanwhile, has been doing shopping, I found out, for passengers along the way. It was a pity, because these were on the front seats. <clears throat> and their newspapers, they get their newspapers about four o'clock in the afternoon, unsurprisingly. That, that bus takes you up to here. Then you get the ferry um, across to Yell Island. So you, you stay on the bus on that ferry. But then at the next ferry, um, the bus comes over to meet you. And you change over, and we get all the shopping off one bus and onto the other and everything. We all change over. And we get on that ferry, and we, then we come onto the northern island of Unst. And that takes you up to Balta Sound. I was the only person left on the bus by then. And the great thing about Balta Sound is there's this very famous bus shelter. I don't know if you know about it. Google it and see. Um, it's decorated. I don't know why, but they say it's the most northernest bus shelter in the UK. And so they've, they're, it's just wacky. I mean, I, I can't describe it. There's even a visitor's book. <laughs> it's just bizarre. Absolutely bizarre. <laughs> yes, I did. I did sign it. Um, P&T coaches do this operation. But the bus doesn't turn around here. This is the thing. It goes on a bit. And I said to the driver, will you take me on to the terminus? 
This is where Balter Sound is, where my hotel was. That's where the shelter is. But it goes on to here. But there was nobody on for it. And he wouldn't go on. I thought, I'll come all this way. And he wouldn't. He said, no, no. He said, what I'll do, he said, I'll pick you up in the morning. He said, come to the garage and we'll go up there first thing in the morning. Because I was going back the next morning. So I went on and um, we went. And here it is. The, this, ladies and gentlemen, is the most northerly bus shelter in the UK. Thank you very much. Well done. Thank you, Roger, very much. That's a truly remarkable journey. I'm sure that is the talk which has taken us on the most miles of any presentation uh, we've, ever, we've ever heard. Um, Right, you have a challenge, gentlemen. Uh, you can ask a question if you've got a quick question, ladies and gentlemen, I should say. Um, but we've got to keep Roger travelling until he gets his yep. senior citizen's pass, you see. So we want some ideas for journeys which you haven't seen mentioned this evening uh, that you think Roger should try uh, in the years ahead. So over to you. We've got a mic, so if you put your hand up, and we I'll, will I'll, get I've a I've left my you. pen behind. Has anyone got a pen oh. I could borrow to make... To make a note. Oh, thank you so much. Or have we been so comprehensive that there's not a bus route yeah, in the do UK? Do tell me your a bus best route bus route, route that you recommend I have a ride on, because I need to do something this summer. <coughs> keep me so keep myself busy. Right. James. Anybody rising? There's a James hand right at the front. Front here. Right, one at the front, and then there's one right at the back. James in the front, and then right to the back. Thank you for an excellent talk, Roger. Um, I'm going to suggest a route that I only did just a few days ago on Friday. I took a day off work to do it because it's getting split. It's the Station at South Route 38, then turns into a 37, which runs from Alton through Chorlton, Liss, down to Petersfield, and then on down to Havant through Horndean and Waterlooville. It's getting split on Friday. And then it will be two separate routes. But at the moment, there's a few through journeys until Friday. But it's still possible after, after that as two separate routes. But very scenic, particularly the 38 section. Very nice route. Thanks so much. I saw your tweet, actually, uh, saying that you'd just done that. And I will try and squeeze it in by Friday. It does sound delightful. Yeah. And I'm, I'm amazed I haven't actually done, on, done that. I've done most routes in Hampshire, but not that one. So thank you so much for pointing it out. Because there's a couple of journeys from Guildford on the 65 that run as double-deckers, the 8.55 and 10.25. Right. I caught the 5 to 9 and then hung around in Alton for a bit and then caught the 11.25, which was a double-decker. Excellent. And I was the only person upstairs from Alton past Petersfield until we got to, just before Horndean, someone else came upstairs. So I had the upstairs of the bus myself for an hour and ten minutes. Even better. <laughs> Wonderful. <laughs> Thanks, right. James. All the way up to the back now. Sorry about that. <clears throat> Keeping you fit. Thank you. Seeing your uh, route to Holy Island the tidal road. There's one a little bit nearer to home. It's not quite as tidal. Uh, that's the route, a cr route across the Strood to West Mersey in Essex, which gets curtailed at Peldon at extreme high tides. And the local tide tables do indicate when the road is closed. And the timetable does say that buses will be curtailed at high tide. And that's a relatively frequent sort of hourly service out from Colchester. And even more recently, I was surprised to see, I think within the last 24, 48 hours, a Stevenson's bus on the way to Wallasey Island near South End unwisely went through the very high tide water. Oh, yes. Uh, and uh, there is some uh, YouTube type yeah. video, and it disappeared off the road into the ditch. So yeah. you've seen it, and that was. Yeah, I saw the photographs. I haven't seen yeah. it on YouTube, but well, I saw it's one photographs. Of the, uh, somebody will have a please explain, I'm sure. What, what, what route number is the one that you're recommending? It changes, but it's, it's, it's easy to find on the old Google. It's Colchester, West Mersey. Okay. It's 75 or something like that, anyway. But uh, I might have got the number, 67, 75, but they change so often. Thank but you very much. Okay. And it runs Sundays as well, so you're okay. Excellent. 
Thank you very much. Excellent okay, talk. Richard, and there's, there's John. Probably easier to go to John first there, if you would, and then perhaps the mic could be passed down to, to Richard. Can I just say excellent use of ordnance survey maps? Um, not so much a suggestion, but which is the highest bus route in England? <laughs> <laughs> oh. Could you pass the mic forward? It'll say, yeah. I have no idea the highest bus route, but um, I'll have to study the contour lines a bit more closely on the Ordnance Survey maps. Yes, I'm a bit of a map uh, nerd as well as a bus and train nerd, as you can tell. Thank you. Uh, thanks, Roger. Fantastic talk. Um, I was also going to suggest a couple of routes in Essex. Um, Ford's coaches of Althorne run two once a fortnight shopper buses from the, uh, the Denji 100. Um, into Chelmsford. So, parts of it are, are more scenic than others. And, you know, Essex is not the, the greatest scenic county, but you could tie it in with perhaps Stevenson's 90 from Malden to Whittam, and then their 38 on to Halstead, um, which is a trip actually I did a couple of Saturdays ago. Um, just one other observation. If you're in the Peak District, you picked on the 173 and the 65 routes, but if you start from Bakewell, and catch a 173 to Lytton and connect onto the 65, you can go to a place called Miller's Dale, oh, yeah, which yeah. is on yeah. the Monsell Trail, the old Midland yeah. Railway main line. And then you can walk back to Bakewell, and it's about six miles. It's a delightful walk. There is a cafe at Hassop Station on the way, and it's downhill if you do it that way. And if you time it right, you get the very nice connection. So, uh, again, one I'd strongly recommend particularly if it's a dry day. <laughs> yes, yeah, no, definitely. Thank you very much. Yes, I, I know Millersdale well, but uh, you're probably right. I should become a bit more adventurous and exercise more <laughs> and take in some of the walks that are available too. Thank you. I think there was plenty of adventure, but the, the exercise bit of it is a good, a good idea. Right, any more ideas, suggestions, comments? Right at the front, I'm going to pass the mic over. Thank you, Roger, very much indeed. That was, that was great. Um, next time we're in Cornwall, you might like to try the uh, Atlantic Breezer. It goes from Padstow to... Um, yep. uh, the A17. Uh, I think it is, yes. yes and, it and, is then, now. and then the summer one that goes around all the uh, coves. In yes, Sinai. absolutely brilliant. I have done that, and it, it's, it, it has to be on a list to do every so often because it is so gorgeous. It is so wonderful. Yeah, absolutely. And amazingly, double deck as well. Yeah. We didn't go across the water to the other part of the United Kingdom. Have we done Ulster yet or not? Um, yes, this, these were Britain's best bus routes. Yes, uh, right. United Kingdom's best bus routes <laughs> will be part two, perhaps. I, I have done a few in Northern Ireland, but not, not, not very many. I say that because I think the intrepid travellers of uh, Vicky and Jeff they are, are actually Jeff about to start are, their as all stations in Ireland. As we trek, speak, so. they're all the stations in Ireland yeah. now. Yep coming to a YouTube near you. Uh, any more, ladies and gentlemen? If not, we'll, where's the last one then, in the middle? If you get the mic across, lovely. I did do, uh, last year, I went from uh, Blandford Forum to Salisbury. It's a lovely route across Cranbourne Chase. And you go into the wonderfully named Sixpenny Handley. <laughs> And I, de I made a day trip out of it from Swanage to uh, Poole, Poole to Blandford, Blandford to Salisbury, Salisbury back to Bournemouth, and then Bournemouth back to Swanage, via which you mentioned mm. the ferries. That's quite mm. a good day out. Lovely. Thank you very much. Blandford Forum to Salisbury. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. The, there are some lovely routes around that area. Ray and I and Martin Gilbert were having a ride round of just a few weeks ago in that neck of the woods. Beautiful. Right. Okay, we'll bring it to a halt there. Um, before I do the wrap-up, um, uh, many of you will know that sadly we had a bit of a hiccup with our talk in January when our speaker, Christian Walmar, got his diary dates in a bit of a muddle uh, and didn't realise he should be here when he was about to fly off out of the country. Um, as I've said uh, one or two meetings uh, in, in the last few weeks, um, Christian is very contrite about that, very apologetic. Um, and we have forgiven him and we have invited him back, it'll be next year now, to give a talk. It may or may not be the same talk he was going to give. Um, but what he was very keen to do was for those people who had booked to come to the talk in January, 
Um, he has arranged for a bulk delivery of the book of the talk, uh, which is the Railways of the Raj, uh, and we do have quite a few copies outside. Um, Susan knows which of you booked for the January talk. She knows which of you took a copy of the book last Thursday when we had the meeting at Acton. Um, so your honesty uh, will not be tested uh, because Susan knows all. Um, but for those who booked for the talk, uh, obviously didn't have the pleasure of hearing it, uh, but who haven't had the chance to pick up a copy of the book, um, as you go out, if you just give your name to Susan, she'll check you off the list and give you a book if you're on it. Right, our thanks to Roger. Um, an absolutely splendid presentation. Oh, go on then, just, just go straight to the applause. Roger, thank you very much indeed. You're welcome. Uh, and uh, if there are future journeys, as I'm sure there will be, uh, we'll invite you back in a, in a year or two's time to, uh, to give us an update and to tell us which is the highest bus route. <laughs>